fundamental of first aid usually taught is artificial respiration, a means of imitating the natural breathing process. When breathing stops, our source of oxygen is cut off. If the body's vital organs have not been damaged, especially the heart, there is an excellent chance for survival. The important factor is that oxygen-rich air be taken into the lungs where the body's system can use it and quickly. Any delay may be fatal. Knowledge of the respiratory system will help you to understand how artificial respiration works and why it works. The respiratory system is made up of three basic parts. The air passage, consisting of the nose, throat, and windpipe, the lungs, and a flexible diaphragm in the chest. Respiration, or breathing, involves two separate acts. The first is inhalation, when normal air is taken into the lungs. The second is exhalation, when used air is forced out. At the lower end of the throat, the air passes through the trachea, or windpipe, an opening that leads to the lungs. The second opening, behind the windpipe, leads to the stomach. This is the esophagus, or food pipe. The windpipe extends into the chest cavity where it divides into the two bronchial tubes, one leading to each lung. After entering the lungs, the tubes keep dividing and redividing, ending in groups of thin-walled cells that are surrounded by capillaries. Oxygen from the lungs is absorbed by the capillaries. This oxygen in the blood is then distributed to all parts of the body. At the same time, carbon dioxide, a waste product of the body, is carried by the blood back to the lungs and released into the air within the cells. It then passes from the air cells when air is exhaled from the lungs. During inhalation, muscles in the chest expand the rib cage and the diaphragm flattens, thereby increasing the capacity of the chest. This creates a slight vacuum. Air then rushes into the lungs to fill this vacuum. Upon exhalation, the muscles relax, the chest shrinks, and the diaphragm bows, putting a pressure on the air-filled lungs that forces the air up and through the air passage. This breathing cycle takes place 12 to 15 times per minute in an adult at rest. Children breathe slightly faster. At the top of the windpipe is a flap called the epiglottis, which closes over the windpipe when a person swallows to prevent food or liquid from entering. When a person is unconscious, this flap may fail to act. For this reason, it is important that no solids or liquids be given since they may enter the windpipe and cause strangulation. If the victim is lying on his back, his tongue may fall back on the epiglottis and close the windpipe. This can also prevent air from reaching the lungs. Therefore, always see that the jaw is extended when a person is unconscious or when breathing is difficult. This will keep the tongue from blocking the airway. Breathing may be stopped as a result of a variety of serious injuries, such as electric shock, drowning, suffocation, and gas poisoning. Suffocation or asphyxiation occurs when the windpipe is blocked, or as in this case, from breathing harmful gases such as carbon monoxide. Symptoms of suffocation are nausea, loss of consciousness, discoloration of lips and earlobes, the pupils of the eyes become dilated, and breathing stops. Mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation is considered the most efficient and practical method of artificial respiration because it provides more air to the lungs. When a person has stopped breathing, begin resuscitation immediately. Medical help should also be summoned. First, make sure the victim's tongue or any foreign object is not blocking the airway. Lift up the head and tilt it backwards to its most extreme position. Pull the lower jaw forward. Keep one hand under the victim's neck to keep the head tilted back. Pinch the nostrils together. This prevents loss of air through the nose. Open your mouth wide, inhale deeply, and place your mouth tightly over the victim's mouth 
and blow into the air passage until the victim's chest rises. If the stomach bulges, air is being diverted into the stomach. Press gently on the stomach. This will cause the air to be released through the mouth. Then readjust the head farther back and try again. After removing your mouth, listen closely for the return flow of air. Repeat this procedure 12 to 15 times a minute for an adult and about 20 gentle puffs per minute for a small child. You should continue artificial respiration until the victim begins to breathe for himself. When a victim is revived, he should be kept quiet as possible until he is breathing regularly. He should be kept covered and treated for shock until suitable transportation is available. A doctor's care is advised during the patient's recovery period as respiratory and other disturbances may develop. Alternate methods of artificial respiration that can be used when injuries or wounds prevent using the mouth-to-mouth -mouth method are the Holger-Nielsen method, the Schaefer or prone pressure method, or the Sylvester method. In some cases where the victim's jaws are clenched too tightly and the mouth cannot be opened easily, mouth-to-nose resuscitation may be performed. It is similar to the mouth-to-mouth -mouth method, except the victim's lips are sealed with the rescuer's index finger of the hand on the chin and the rescuer blows into the victim's nose. Those who do not wish to come in contact with the victim's mouth may hold a handkerchief over it. This does not greatly affect the exchange of air. Remember, certain basic principles must be kept in mind when giving mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. Open the airway. Clear if necessary. And begin artificial respiration at once. In emergencies, everyone should be prepared to breathe for someone else, whether it be their own child, a neighbor, or a fellow worker.